slide show. Just a minute. So this is a slide show. Slide show, custom slide show. Okay. So tetracyclines are the one of the important uh, antibiotics, very commonly used in uh, the veterinary practice is concerned. So many times it is a drug of choice for many of the bacterial diseases and also the rickettsial diseases like anaplasma, baby, anaplasma and uh, sometimes the theleria also. So because of this thing, then uh, the antibiotics, especially tetracyclines, uh, take a very important part in the antibiotic section is concerned. So tetracyclines, as such, they are the group of broad spectrum antibiotics having the nucleus of four cyclic ring. That's why they are called as the tetra, tetra means four, or cyclines, tetracyclines. And they are either obtained naturally from the soil act actinomycetes or prepared semi-synthetically. Naturally, they are also obtained from the species actinomycetes. And uh, whenever it is required in the industrial scale, they are prepared in the large uh, scale, especially in the industrial scale is concerned. So they are uh, similar antibacterial features, but differ somewhat from one another in terms of their antimicrobial spectra and also the pharmacokinetic properties. The general usefulness of the tetracyclines has declined with the onset of bacterial resistance, but still they remain the treatment of choice for some specific infections. So, starting from the 1945, when the tetracyclines have evolved, till date, they are very commonly used in veterinary practice. Of course, the resistance would have developed to a greater extent, but till date, it is one of the good antibacterial drug is concerned. Hence, uh, uh, they are very, very commonly used drugs. So, the we need to learn the mechanism of action, then structure activity relationship, about the something about the history and also the kinetics and dynamics parameters. So the history coming to the history, the tetracycline antibiotics were produced by the systemic, systematic screening of the soil microorganisms. So they have taken the soil and examined which are all the required things. And the uh, first member of the group was the chlorotetracycline, or it was also known as the oreomycin, derived from the soil axinomycin, that's the streptomyces oreofacius. So this uh, you can note that the streptomyces oreofacius introduced in the 1948, that is the first tetracycline obtained. So this was uh, followed by the oxytetracycline, which is uh, one of the most commonly used antimicrobial agent in veterinary practice. So highest used drug, the oxytetracycline, top one among the antibiotics is concerned. And removal of the chlorine from the ring, especially the, uh, what you call as 
the removal of the chloride moiety among the structure of the chlorotetracycline produced semi synthetic tetracycline which was introduced in 1952 so later it is developed further discovery led to the other synthetic tetracyclines like the metacycline doxycycline and roly tetracycline so among these things the doxycycline is also one of the very commonly used drug in canine practice for the treatment of the early seizures now and also the doxycycline and uh, the minocycline are relatively newer drugs newer tetracycline doxycycline with high lipid solubility and the longer duration of the action so this doxycycline and uh, also the uh, minocycline these are all uh, very relatively newer tetracyclines with higher lipid solubility and longer duration of the action then the american pharmaceutical industry in 1940s they examined the actinomycetes they took the soil from the earth and screened for the elaboration of varieties of antimicrobial substances during this discovery they found the tetracyclines here the person who is behind the this particular invention is benjamin mink dagger in uh, to born on the september 1st 1872 and died on the september 10 1956 so he introduced uh, this uh, uh, tetracyclines and of course he is a botanist basically american botanist and uh, he remembered for the discovery of the chlorotetracycline it is also called as the areomycin it is the first cyclic antibiotic so in the year uh, he has found the botanist is a basically botanist and uh, he told a word that it takes a lot of time to get experience and once you have got it you have to it then you ought to go on using it that that it takes a lot of time to get experience but the experience should make man perfect so this is a famous scientist told by the benjamin ming daga so this is the person who invented the chlor tetracycline which is having tetracycline means both the four benzene rings are joined together then uh, with a chloride moiety then uh yes he is this person is also a benjamin ming dagger who discovered the ultra mold that is the streptomyces oreofaciens a soil a bacterium producing the orino oreomycins so oreomycin and uh, the right picture is the technicians of his lab who is screening varieties of the soil samples in the leaderly laboratories so this person was a in charge of the leaderly laboratory and found the, the drug oreomycin or the another name is the chlorotetracycline and in the lab his technicians screened thousands of the soil samples so they were behind it and ultimately found the streptomyces oreofaciens then in 2005 another class that is the tegacycline tegacycline the first member of a new subgroup of the tetracycline named that the glycyclicyclines was introduced to treat infections which are resistant to other antibiotics including the conventional tetracycline so tegacycline is also the accidental history of course uh, Uh, this is uh, the history in 1990 different uh, antibiotics were being uh, uh, they were screened starting from varieties of the years of course the tigacil it is the white pharmaceutical and uh, it is approved by the fda for the treatment of different infections then in the 2006 it was approved by the emea the american medical association and 2007 the 
Regicycline resistant chemical, regiciclinical acinobacter. So they emerged as the, the because of this thing, the digicycline emerged. Whereas the other new antibiotic, especially with different antibiotics are also found in different countries, the digicycline was found. So this is, uh, of course, the general history of how this uh, uh, particularly the different antibiotics uh, developed. Please go through this particular slide. And if you remember this slide, that makes uh, you to very easy to remember the date of year of the de determination of the different type of the antibiotic. So the history of this antibiotic starts uh, from 1911, Arsefenamine uh, was uh, started in 1935, Prontosil, first sulfonamide uh, was invented in uh, the coming to the different classic, uh, classification. 1928, the uh, penicillin was found by the Alexander Fleming. And then the 1948, of course, the 42, uh, the benzyl penicillin, that's the first penicillin derived, uh, was discovered by the Alexander Fleming. Then the 1944, the streptomycin, the first aminoglycoside derived, whereas the 1948, the chlorotetracycline was invented. Whereas in 1942 itself, the gramicidin, yes, the first peptide antibiotic was found, and in the 1961, trimethoprim. And once again, the chloromphenicol was discovered in between this thing and the year 1949. Whereas 1952, erythromycin, 1955, vancomycin, then 1960, it's metronidazole, then 64, cephalothin, that is the cephalosporin. And the 8067, ciproploxin, the first, the, the first, second generation fluorocodolone was invented. The nalidic acid was discovered in 1967 before the invention of the ciprofloxacin. So this is the pathway, how it has come as uh, the developing like this. Different years, different uh, mile steps have been developed. And uh, the in the year, the 2000 lenizolid and 2005 onwards, that's the digicyclines era. Then here also you can see that in between this 1940 to 1950, these are all the antibiotics derived like the bacitracin, streptomycin, then uh, the actinomycin, then penicillin, whereas the gramicidin, all these are derived. And 1950-60, uh, about uh, this neomycin and uh, spiromycin, tetracyclines, all these are invented in between the range, of course. So different antibiotics, they started uh, the different years. Here, one thing uh, what we can observe is, after this 1940 and in between 1960, there was a huge discovery and uh, new drug uh, molecules were found, especially during this uh, 1940 to 60. The re reason behind this one was the world wars happened because in the world war, a lot of soldiers get affected uh, because of the bullet injuries, etc. Then because of this thing, it made to invent new and new antibiotic. And the emergence of the new diseases like the plague, then cholera and many more diseases. And also the different uh, uh, parasitic diseases, the fungal diseases. So they made the scientists to discover the new and new drugs. So it went up to the highest number you can see during this thing. Then after the 1970s or 1960 onward, it declined. Here you can see. Then after 2000 onwards, uh, the new antibiotic discovery was totally a, a very, very less because and now the hue and cry that the antibiotic resistance and uh, uh, the judicial use of the antibiotics need to be done. That's the hue and cry. Hence, uh, 
instead of finding a new antibiotic, now the pharmaceutical companies and scientists, they are busy with existing uh, usage of the existing of these antibiotics instead of finding a new and new one with costly one. So once again, uh, uh, the, their, uh, uh, this uh, revolving with the antibiotics found during the 1940 to 1980. So this is the era how it is developed. Suddenly it increased just after the uh, 1940, whenever the world war and the outbreaks of varieties of the diseases, bacterial diseases made, especially in case of veterinary and also the human practice. Here also you can see that the empotericin, then griseofulvin, etc. They are all the antifungal drugs and uh, whenever the fungal disease was highest, then the nystatin, etc. So a uh, lot of antibiotics were, antifungal agents were developed and they are put into the use. Yeah, this uh, is for your, the general knowledge, how it developed. 1940, there was very few antibiotics, see here, only penicillin, then streptomycin, then bacitracin, all these were there. Then later it developed to a greater extent. Then tetracyclines were first reported in the scientific literature in uh, 1948, in the, especially the, uh, they were found their broad spectrum antibacterial activity and were commercialized with clinical success beginning in the 1940s. Then uh, the early 1950s, then uh, in between this uh, era, a lot of uh, these retrocyclines were developed. As uh, this uh, oreomycin uh, was discovered in the Lederle laboratory by the person, especially the five-year-old Tobe Hockett. This is the lady, she was suffering from the bacterial meningitis and she was treated with the oreomycin, that is the first anti, uh, this tetracycline. Of course, uh, she was unable to respond to penicillins and the streptomycin, etc. Hence, she is the first patient to the Lederle laboratory, then she was being treated with the variety of the antibacterial drugs. One minute. So power has got. Then, so the oreomycin was treated, uh, being treated. So, the tetracycline was, what is happening? Tetracycline was one of the very good and One of the a, a tiger means it is one of the strongest medicine. A powerful new partner along with the tetracycline was uh, having a lot of uh, advertises. Uh, so uh, they showed a picture of the tiger with uh, who, who is watching who is walking with that of a particular doctor. Then they told that it's a tiger. That's why the name 
taiga seal it came into the market so that's how it uh, went then the chemistry and properties especially of this uh, tetracycline so this is the tetracycline ring a b c d four rings are there that's the benzene rings then they are joined together by the the carbon moieties so you can you can count the position like this 1 2 3 4 4 a then it is 5 high u a etc so it uh, came like this then the tetracyclines are uh, close congeners of the polycyclic that's the naphthacin carboamides naphthacin carboamides so they are the family of four ringed amphoteric compounds they are all the four ringed and which differ by specific substitutions at different positions here you can see varieties of the positions are here and as a group tetracyclines are acidic in nature and hygroscopic the meaning of hygroscopy is they will draw the water from the atmosphere then in aqueous solution form salts with both acids and both bases so the chemical nature is like that then they character uh, they are characteristically having the fluorescence when exposed to uv light so that's how the chemical property is being explained the hydrochloride salts of the tetracyclines are mostly used in the clinics except for the doxycycline so that is marketed at as the high clay and tetracyclines uh, form insoluble chelate with the divalent and tetravalent cations like the calcium 44 the magnesium ferrum and uh, the different structures and also the tetracyclines are stable as powders but their aqueous solutions are not stable so the therefore the parenteral injection or im or iv or subcutaneous they are formulated in propylene glycol that's why the tetracycline is always prepared in the propylene glycol or polyvinyl pyrrolidine so these are all the solvents and the stabilizers are added to increase stability and to prolong elimination half life so the tetracyclines when they are exposed to the you know what you call as the air they get oxidized hence they are usually uh, kept at a cool place because uh, there is always chance that the they get what you call as the black color when we kept them open and physical and chemical properties of the tetracycline permit them to formulate it as the different solution like the injections bolus capsules powders feed additives and uh, sometimes the uh, eye ointment and uh, the especially also the creams and intra mammary preparations so these are all the different uses then the classification of the tetracyclines coming to the tetracyclines they are generally classified according to their duration of action so or half life so the first classification is short acting tetracyclines whose duration of action action is less than 8 hours examples are the oxy tetracycline then the regular tetracycline and the chlor tetracyclines so these are having the short half life and short acting tetracyclines whose half life is less than 8 hours whereas the intermediate acting tetracyclines the t half is 8 to 16 hours more than 8 less than 16 hours so the examples of this category are demeclocycline and metacycline so when compared to the other classes especially the cyclosporins it is very difficult to remember the name but here it is not a problem because only uh, three or four examples are there so the intermediate acting tetracyclines are demeclocycline and uh, the metacycline 
There is the long acting tetracyclines are the doxycycline, minocycline, and tetracycline. So all these are having the half life more than 16 hours. That means the administration uh, once in 16 hours is enough for this particular drug. So to the you can remember this OTC, oxytetracycline, tetracyclines, and chlorotetracycline. So we can abbreviate them as OTC or over the counter therapy like that. Then the intermediate acting tetracyclines are the demeclocycline or democracy, you can remember, then metacycline. Whereas the long acting cyclines, especially tetracyclines, doxycycline, minocycline, and tetracycline are the examples. So the mechanism of action of uh, the tetracyclines is they inhibit the bacterial protein synthesis and are predominantly they are bacteriostatic, bacteriostatic drugs. So just like the sulfonamides, they are also bacteriostatics, but the mechanism is totally different. They are the inhibitors of the folic acid, which is required for, for the bacteria, for its growth. Whereas these are going to inhibit the bacterial protein synthesis and are preliminarily they are bacteriostatic. And in a way, somewhat uh, they are similar to that of the aminoglycosides. So, so aminoglycosides, the action of tetracyclines can be divided into two process. Then number one is the passage of tetracyclines into bacterial cell, then interaction of the tetracyclines with the bacterial ribosome. So two types are there. So first, uh, the drug need to need get entry inside the bacterial cell wall, cell or the bacterial cell membrane. Then it need to inhibit the ribosomes of the bacteria. That's 50S and 30S is the classification. So coming to the first one, that is the passage of tetracyclines into the bacterial cells. And tetracyclines enter gram-negative bacteria by into two transport mechanisms in part by the passive process. So the bacterial cell entry of the tetracycline is by the passive process and by part active transport. So both are there. So what happens in this particular process? The first is the passive diffusion through the hydrophilic channels formed by the porin proteins in outer cell membrane. So each bacteria is having a small gap for the entry of the nutrients, the water, etc. So they are known as the porin channels, which are made up of the porin proteins. So simply what we can say is it is the gate of the bacterial cell wall or the cell membrane, which lets the foreign materials inside the bacterial cell. It may be an antibacterial drug or sometimes the nutrients may be required to the bacterial cell growth. So always this porin channel checks what type of the substances are entering the bacterial cell, just like a watchman or the security persons who are checking you all when you are entering the veterinary college like that. So they are the proteins which are uh, examining each and every substance which is entering the bacteria. Then more lipid soluble membranes which are having the members, especially the more lipid soluble members, the doxycycline and minocycline. So both of these are long acting substances and they pass directly through the lipid bilayer by passive diffusion. So you know how the cell is formed, there will be a inner cell membrane, then uh, the peptide glycan cell, cell wall, and also the varieties of the other substances which form the lipid bilayer. So the second mechanism, the first is the lipid bilayer entry by the 
affect these antibiotics. And uh, the second mechanism involves an energy dependent active transport system that pumps all tetracyclines across the cytoplasmic membranes. So just imagine this as the pump set which sucks the water and puts it out with which requires the electricity. Just like here also the transporter molecule it requires or the pump all tetracyclines across cytoplasmic membrane. So as and when they are coming in the contact with that of the pump immediately they will be put inside the bacterial cell. And although the passage of the tetracycline into gram positive bacteria is less well understood, it requires an energy dependent carrier transport mechanism. So the uh, gram positive bacteria have got, as you know very well, the cell wall is very, very thick there. And the peptidoglycochains, etc., they form a barrier to pass inside the bacterial cell. So, because of this thing, the tetracyclines, uh, it is uh, very difficult for them to enter the bacterial cell wall or cell membrane. And another thing is, so to enter the gram negative bacteria inside, they require the energy dependent mechanism with the help of a pump or active transport with the utilization of the energy. So therefore a responsive host defense system is uh, very much essential to remove the bacteriostatic bacteria. Static means without any growth. So this such bacteria, they will cause all the damages to the cell, but they will not grow further. So such type of bacteria need to be addressed by the host defense system and is essentially required to remove the static bacteria. So usually most of the tetracyclines are primarily bacteriostatic. So they will arrest the growth of the bacteria, but they will not kill the bacteria and uh, the body immune system should pump such materials out. So the, especially the tetracyclines at higher doses, especially in the urine, they tend to become bactericidal because at high concentrations, they appear to affect the functional integrity of the bacterial cell membrane as well. So in normal doses, which is uh, a very safe dose, then they will uh, only kill the gram negative bacteria, but they are not going to affect the other one, especially which are having the thick cell wall. But in higher concentration, they, what you call as, they get entry inside the bacterial cell and act on the bacteria. So at very high concentrations, they tend to impair protein synthesis in the host. So that's also one of the tough tasks, especially the 60S and the 50S and 40S ribosomal subunit, especially the eukaryotes or multiple cell organisms. So they are going to bind with that of the 40S subunit and the protein synthesis will be inhibited in the host also. So however, the penetration of tetracycline in the eukaryotic cell through cell membrane is very poor due to lacking up of the specific carrier transport system. So you, uh, you have to ask the question why it is affecting only the bacteria or the parasite and not affecting the host or here the host means it may be a human being, it may be a cow or any animal. So it is uh, poor when compared to the bacterial cell because it requires the transport system. This is the main hurdle. No such transport systems are existing. And uh, in the course of development of uh, the bacterial resistance, so the, it's also being possible by the bacteria. So they have developed certain transporters so that they can put out the pooled 
antibiotics inside the bacterial cell with the pumps. So the bacteria itself will create certain pumps and from inside to outside, they are going to push the antimicrobial drug. So that's one of the mechanism, how the bacteria gains resistance. Then coming to the spectrum, spectrum means always in case of antibiotics, it refers to the, uh, what you call as, the spectrum means whether they are affecting against the gram positive bacteria, gram negative, or also sometimes the rickettsia infection and sometimes the fungals and many more. So tetracyclines are uh, to tell you the broad spectrum antibiotic because uh, whether the disease is caused by the gram negative bacteria or the positive bacteria, tetracyclines are going to act on them. So they are active against a wide range of the aerobic and anaerobic gram positive and gram negative bacteria. So that's why they are having the broadest spectrum and they also activate against uh, the active against the mycoplasma. So the mycoplasma, the rickettsia nowadays, the rickettsial uh, microorganisms like the early ischiosis and also especially early ischiosis is a very common phenomenon which is uh, transmitted by the ticks and the chlamydia cytosis, which causes the cytokosis, and also sometimes in the birds and some protozoa like anaplasma. So these protozoa are hemoprotozoans. So they are the anaplasma, tyleria, and the amoebae, anaplasma, hemobarbotenella, and tyleris is also to some extent we can treat primarily with the tetracyclines and so especially some of the amoeba, unwanted amoeba which invade the liver etc. They are the targets of the tetracyclines. So when initially uh, they were introduced into the market in the year 1948, they affected all the bacterial and all types of bacteria and it was a wonder drug at that time. So for almost all the bacterial disease, the tetracycline was the antibiotic and cost of the tetracycline was also very, very less. And it was effective against uh, the strains like the Pseudomonas originosa, then the Proteus, then Serechia, the Klebsiella, which is causing the urinary tract infections, then Salmonella, which used to cause the typhoid, Salmonella typhi and many more diseases. Of course, the mastitis caused by the Staphylococcus agalexia, etc. Then Corinebarium renal, which is causing the severe kidney damage. And all these have become resistant to tetracycline because of the indiscriminate use of the drug. And tetracyclines are uh, ineffective against the fungi and virus. So they are not active. Whereas some of the penicillin, like nistatin, etc., they are effective against the fungi as well as also against the bacteria. Of course, these are effective in both gram positive and negative bacteria as they are going to inhibit the protein synthesis of both types. Whereas it is not an antifungal drug or antiviral or all other properties are not there. Then this is also important thing that's the microbial resistance to the tetracycline. Then the, this develops very slowly in a gradual manner uh, because the, especially in case of veterinary market, uh, many tetracyclines, uh, especially doxycycline, uh, chlorotetracycline, and the oxytetracycline is the one which is used uh, uh, to a highest extent. But oxytetracycline, uh, it's gaining very, very slow bacterial resistance when compared to the third or fourth generation cyclosporins. So this takes a lot of time. So that's why it is uh, one of the boon drug to the field of veterinarians and uh, 
you know that sometimes the para veterinarians and other persons they never administer the proper dose or full dose because of the cost factor which is not afforded by the owner so the most important mechanism of the resistance is the decreased penetration of the drug into previously sensitive microorganisms here it says that the microorganisms were treated earlier with the tetracycline but uh, they develop the resistance so what they did is the second time they administered the high dose uh, to the same organism they were resistance at that time means they are unable to penetrate the bacterial cell membrane or sometimes the cell wall also so usually the staphylo and strepto uh, they are not so sensitive to the uh, drug tetracycline but other antibiotics are okay so the uh, number one is the bacterial resistance is by not enter allowing the drug to, to enter inside the bacterial cell because the ribosomes are present in bacteria so this is one mechanism and uh, another thing is the decreased antibiotic influx into the bacterial cell because this is uh, because this thing is the development of less efficient transport mechanisms or due to energy dependent efflux of the antibiotic from the bacterial cell wall by the modified protein so this is the mechanism how uh, they are going to develop their own pumps or then they bacteria are such a clever organisms that they will put out all the antibiotic which is present inside the bacterial cell may be diffused through the active transport or passive transport or uh the penetrated to the cell wall or membrane so because here both are uh, affected especially gram negative and gram positive then the enzymatic inactivation of tetracyclines that's the third mechanism and production of the proteins by microorganisms these protect ribosomes by binding with tetracyclines are two lesser important mechanisms uh, and they are noted by the scientists uh, very fastly and uh, the mechanism of acquiring resistance is being studied because the proteins uh, of production of the proteins by the microorganism is uh, hindered by this particular microorganism so that's one of the third uh, component how it they are going to develop the resistance the and the other thing is the resistant to tetracyclines is primarily the plasmid mediated so a pile is formed in between two uh, uh, bacteria and the genetic material will be exchanged and it is called as the plasmid mediated resistance that uh, you have seen in the introductory class whereas the microorganisms those have become resistant to one tetracycline uh, they are also resistant to the other members of the group so this is happening because of uh, the, the human behavior and also sometimes the cost factor of the antimicrobial drugs are concerned underdosing may be happening or sometimes the partial cross resistance between the two bacteria occurs especially uh, when they come in close contact the plasmid will be exchanged between the resistant bacteria to that of the sensitive bacteria and the sensitive bacteria becomes resistance so uh, especially in the staphylococcus uh, uh, and staph streptococcus the klebsiella e coli and many more organisms adopt this particular method then the partial cross resistance between tetracycline and the chloramphenicol has been noted in some of the microorganisms 
so coming to the kinetics that the absorption distribution metabolism and excretion process of the tetracycline so this is uh, very much relevant to the field of veterinary practice because the oral absorption of the tetracyclines is variable with the other drugs like uh, the chlorotetracycline so it is variable especially the aromycin is not so well absorbed and being less bioavailable and newer lipid uh, soluble tetracycline like the uh, minocycline and doxycyclines they are very well absorbed uh, through the gastrointestinal tract whereas the older uh, the tetracyclines are not uh, also going to do such things and the bioavailability is about 100% that means uh, totally the absorbed drug is uh, available for the action and absorption of the tetracyclines from gi tract is decreased in presence of the polyvalent cations here cations means which go toward the cathode so cathode is having negative charge so the molecules like the calcium magnesium and ferrum or the iron so if uh, this uh, divalent or polyvalent uh, cations are present in the food then uh, this will going to form the precipitate or chelate with those substance and ultimately will not be made available so all tetracyclines produce varying degree of tissue irritation and uh, on uh, the parenteral administration especially the chlorotetracycline but it is a very awkward situation when you start uh, practicing as a veterinarians so if you administer the injection of the oxytetracycline the animal feels a lot of pain so it will uh, uh, lay down get up and uh, many times become very restless and sometimes it bellows also because and at the site of the injection lot of pain or lot of pain will be present and uh, of course uh, uh, in case of human beings this uh, oxytetracycline is uh, nowadays it is not used but especially to some of the diseases it is used along with the mixing of the 2% lignocaine which is a local anesthesia so the humans cannot tolerate the pain and uh, the ethics uh, uh, is not going to permit them to use the tetracycline supplements because they cause severe irritation because the severe irritations so especially iv injections are very very painful iv injections are the very very painful injections and this is the one of the disadvantage in veterinary practice so the pra the products are there but they are highly irritant in nature especially the oxytetracycline is one one of the thing and also the sulfonamides so some turbid solutions are also there viscous one so the long acting one especially the uh, sulfa pinoxyperidazine etc so all the tetracycline produce varying degree of tissue irritation on parenteral administration so especially the first agent that is the chlorotetracycline or oreomycin it is having highest degree of tissue irritation means the animal will feel lot of discomfort after iv administration of course the fast iv administration many times the animal will collapse so the reason are uh, reasons are many many are there so that's also one of the property of the tetracyclines the irritation especially after injection except the iv iv is not going to cause uh, the much irritation but whereas the other drugs other routes of the administration especially the intramuscular subcutaneous etc there will be lot of pain and very low absorption then the if they are administered parenterally or enterally means other than the oral route uh, the buffered solutions are prepared usually they are 
combined with the procaine, which is local anesthetic, uh, they are administered to the extent of 1% or 2% for IM injection only, in the case of small animal. So the tetracyclines are highly painful antibiotics when compared to the other antibiotics. So better to avoid them unless and until it is required because the ethics, uh, especially in case of humans is very, very strong. Whereas uh, in case of animals, what happens? Any type of the injections, you can administer them without any hesitation. So without any hesitation also, you can administer. Especially nobody is questioning the veterinarians. Why you are injecting a irritant duct to my animal? Because they are the dumb animals. So this makes the manufacturers of the veterinary drugs without taking any care about the irritation. But that should be the concern also in the form of the ethics. So hope in future also the veterinary drugs which are developed newly need to follow all the guidelines, especially for less irritant property. Whereas these tetracyclines are not passing through the blood brain barrier. Blood brain barrier is not passed by these uh, particular microorganisms. So the cere cerebrospinal fluid, the penetration rate is also very, very rare or less. Then the tetracyclines are stored in reticular endothelial cells of the liver and also the cells of the spleen and bone marrow. So all these are the storage sites where they are getting stored. The reticular endothelial system or the cells, especially cells of the liver sometimes and cells of the spleen also, many times uh, they uh, become the storehouse of the tetracyclines of different tetracyclines. So the another disadvantage of uh, these drugs is they will be incorporated in, in case of the farming bone means the new uh, uh, calf or the dog or the younger ones, they are more susceptible. And the they are also going to interrupt the teeth, possibly because of their binding action with that of the calcium. So in case of the cattle or the sheep and goat, the toxicity of the tetracyclines uh, is indicated by uh, the discolored teeth. So that's indication. And also the biotransformation and excretion as such. Uh, though, so uh, the exception of the lipid soluble tetracyclines like uh, the doxycycline and minocycline. So the tetracycline antibiotics are not metabolized to a significant extent in the body. That's one of the thing. So whereas the beta lactamase antibiotics, they are secreted as such, whereas the sulfur, 50-50%. Uh, uh, some of them are going to uh, be decrease this, uh, especially they will be thrown out of the body or sometimes they are excreted in the urine by the, whereas the other roots are also present. And uh, most tetracyclines are excreted in the urine, about the 60% excreted in the urine via the glomerular filtration pathway. That means the glomerulus itself, the, in the Bowman's capsule, there is be a squeezing of the different type of the liquids, just like which looks a funnel. And this type of excretion occurs to the extent of 60%. And in the feces, it is 40% via biliary secretion. Especially this is of major concern in case of cattle, because uh, uh, the normal intestinal microflora and uh, the ruminal microflora will be totally distorted by the administration of the oral tetracyclines. 
So of course, uh, even if you administer the IV, IM, or other routes also, it will be uh, secreted through the granular filtration pathway, and uh, they undergo the extensive enterohepatic circulation, which may affect their duration of action because uh, the enterohepatic circulation, if it is more and more, the metabolism will be more because the drug is exposed uh, to the cells of the liver for the long duration. That's why they are affecting the action of the duration. Coming to the side effects, usually the tetracyclines have got the very less toxicity, except just like the penicillins. They say that if allergy is not a matter, all the penicillins are same. But the tetracyclines have a relatively low toxicity at normal dosage level, which is indicated by the 10 to 20 milligram per kg, etc. So if it is uh, not, if it has exceeded, then it causes the resistance. So the side effects may be worsen, worsen in animals with renal failure or the renal disease due to the decreased elimination of the drug. So hope you are getting this, all these things. So the gastrointestinal upsets are one of the most common problems in most of the antibiotic in many antibiotics, but it is very high in case of the tetracyclines. The beta lactamase uh, in the uh, beta lactamase category of the antibiotic, the amoxicillin, yes, it is not absorbed through the uh, intestine, whereas the ampicillin is the one which is going to kill almost all the gastric microflora. And anorexia, abdominal pain, then diarrhea and uh, nausea and vomiting in uh, small animals, it may occur if the dosage is eaten more. So they will vomit that particular uh, ingesta and get rid of the toxicity or the toxic side effect. Then one of the thing is the super infection because in presence of one bacteria, another may grow, which is uh, more dangerous than the original bacteria. So the non-susceptible pathogens such as the fungi, yeast, and uh, uh, the other substances, the bacterial resistance is the possibility. So even though after this uh, 48, about uh, 75 years over, uh, but still the oxytetracycline is having the action on the bacterial, especially bacteria of the animal origin. So it's a wonder drug really in case of the veterinary practice is concerned. The oral administration of the tetracyclines will lead to fatal diarrhea. They cause diarrhea, especially in case of the horses and indigestion due to the deleterious effects of rumen microflora. So the animal become severely anorectic if you administer the parenteral antibiotics also, especially if you administer the tetracyclines parenterally, means uh, the IM, IV or some site also, the microflora are going to be the, uh, distorted or they may be killed and it results in the diarrhea. Then uh, effect of these drugs on the bones or the teeth. Yes, this is one of the concern. So tetracyclines are deposited in growing teeth and bones due to their chelating property with calcium. So this is one of the major concern or the hindrance to use these substances, especially in case of the large animals orally. So they form tetracycline calcium orthophosphate complex. So calcium and tetracycline, they uh, react in the in vivo and form the orthophosphate complex, which inhibits the calcification. Example is uh, the hypoplastic dental enamel and uh, the results in permanent discoloration of the teeth. So this also happens uh, very commonly in case of the human beings. 
but in the veterinary also the similar type of the drug interaction with the body is also seen the especially in case of calves if, if these uh, antibiotics are uh, administered for a prolonged period then discoloration or the decoloration of the teeth will take place and the bones become such a fragile that they become uh, very susceptible for the fractures so the calcium in bones and uh, uh, because of the lack of delay of the calcium the wound especially it get delayed especially the parturition etc they got delayed so the during the pregnancy already as i told temporary suppression of the bone growth so they will cause cross the blood placental barrier and cause the toxicity on the host that's one of the common thing we to see yes that uh, means that these drugs should not be administered in pregnancy and also the young animals uh, the neonates but it is temporary they will recover later and uh, become healthy hepatic toxicity in high doses only they are going to cause the hepatic toxicity and produces the faulty infiltration of the liver that means in the liver cells the fat is uh, accumulated and they become dysfunctional and the hepatotoxicity with jaundice due to large dose of the tetracycline has been reported in pregnant women and also in certain animals so it causes the hepatotoxicity and destroys the cells of the liver uh, when large doses are given especially in pregnant animals maybe Uh, so continuous dosing of the pregnant animals by the tetracycline should be avoided then nephrotoxicity they are potentially nephrotoxic as usual and particularly in case of the renal insufficiency and they may impair the urinary concentrating ability of the patients even with the wrong uh, this uh, normal renal functions and the administration of expired tetracycline please see this thing especially the administration of expired tetracycline products in animals may lead to franconi like syndrome with acute tubular necrosis here administration of the tetracycline which are expired sometimes the livestock inspectors and many more uh, many times uh, yes the medicine goes uh, the expiry then uh, suppose if these drugs are injected they call the franconi like syndrome means uh, the disturbances especially in the acute renal nephritis means the kidneys affected in this condition and the inhibition of mammalian protein synthesis has been catabolic effect resulting in the increase in the blood urea nitrogen level so here even though they are not so highly toxic hepatotoxic this uh, nephrotoxic uh, they, there is a, a transient increase in the blood urea nitrogen and also the serum creatinine uh, remains the same and uh, the hypersensitivity reactions are as usual they are not common with the tetracyclines and uh, rarely they produce the skin rashes just like the penicillins and uh, sometimes lot of itching urticaria and exfoliative dermatitis they may cause whereas the angioedema and anaphylaxis are extremely they are rare so the every day thousands of the cattle population is being injected with the oxytetracycline but the anaphylaxis reactions are very very less whereas the complete uh, cross sensitization is exhibited by the tetracyclines means if uh, a person is uh, very sensitive he may be allergic to the tetracyclines 
then many times what happens he may be allergic to the other compounds of the tetracycline suppose he is allergic to the tetracycline or oxytetracycline he is also uh, he will be uh, what you call as the resistance or the allergic uh, to the other products like the doxycycline and minocycline etc the cardiovascular effects so this is very common in veterinary practice the veterinarians many times without a proper restraint of the animal try to give the iv injection and what happens is a rapid injection uh, it happens automatically then the animal may collapse so what happens if it is uh, given iv administration then the rapid I, uh, iv only or else if you administer it within the fluid bottle and slowly administer then uh, it may result in the hypotension then sometimes the collapse also the sudden death without any apparent clinical signs it will be there so one need to be very careful and this has been related to the rapid chelation of the blood calcium as soon as you give the iv and uh, through a depressant effect by the propylene glycol so it is also the carrier of the oxytetracycline or it's also called as the excipient so it may also cause the cardiac arrest that may be resulted due to the cardiac arrest then pre treatment of the, the animals with the calcium gluconate and slow iv administration may prevent all these unwanted effects so uh, you need to administer the tetracycline for a long time at the same time there may be chance that the syncope of the animal so what at that time what we can do we can administer the calcium maybe the iv or orally uh, then we can administer the very slow injection of the tetracycline and uh, the other tetracyclines cause other effects irritation of the uh, parenteral administration that's also one of the thing and uh, the phagocytosis at the site of injection particularly the when present in very high concentration either directly by chelating the calcium or indirectly by depressing prothrombin synthesis time due to the depression of the vitamin k by the bacterial cells and this is also see this such type of the same uh, type of the adverse reaction is also seen in some of the cyclosporins and some of the penicillins also which cause the nephrotoxicity the other uh, adverse effects caused by the tetracycline include uh, there will be during uh, fever it is administered especially in case of cats it causes photoallergic dermatitis in case of the humans and do especially the anti anabolic effect so the animal may lose the weight that's called as the anti anabolic effect may also be found then contraindications and precautions tetracyclines are contraindicated in as as well the hepatic insufficiency as they may cause the hepatotoxicity and they are not indicated in the persons who are hypersensitive to the tetracycline and oral administration of the tetracyclines to ruminants and horses is not recommended because they inhibit the normal bacterial fermentation of the plant fibers hence they should be uh, always uh, administered as far as possible iv because im is very very painful and they should not be used in the last second or third month of the gestation especially uh especially in case of pregnant animals and up to 4 weeks in case of the neonates especially calves that's one of the thing whereas the tetracycline preparations should never be used beyond their expiry date or else they cause severe nephrotite nephritis and the they should not be administered with intrathecal induction theca interna and theca externa you, you know this thing and uh, another thing is whenever you are taking the or administering the tetracycline they should never be administered with milk 
and milk products. Please remember this particular thing also. All orally acting tetracyclines to be given at least one to two hours before or after milk. If the person, especially in case of kids and who is on, on the milk, these are going to chelate the calcium and, uh, and caution containing the products also, milk or the chocolate or any other thing. After eating the chocolate, one should not consume the oxytetracycline because it causes the chelation of the milk or get the calcium in the milk. And drug interaction, lastly, the antacids are the iron preparations like the slime purgatives, kaolin, pectin, uh, then sodium bicarbonate. These are uh, the drugs. If they are simultaneously administered, they are going to decrease the absorption of the tetracyclines from the GI tract, especially the antacids. They get neutralized. And uh, simultaneous administration of nephrotoxic drugs like the methoxyfluorine, or uh, uh, they may hasten the renal damage, or any nephrotoxic drug should not be administered with the tetracyclines, especially the aminoglycosides. So they may interfere with the bacterial uh, cidal activity of the penicillins, cephalosporins, and aminoglycosides. So as the cephalosporins should never be administered with that of the aminoglycosides, the tetracycline should also not to be in the, what you call as the mixed with the penicillins, cephalosporins, and amino acids. So the and another thing is the concurrent use of the tetracyclines and oral coagulants may be aggravate the bleeding disorder and uh, by depressing the plasma prothrombin activity is also seen. Then microsomal enzyme uh, inducers like the phenobarbital sodium and phenytoin may decrease the plasma half-life or lipid solubility of the tetracycline. So the doxycycline and minocycline, they are administered orally and they may cause this particular effect is concerned. Then tetracyclines should not be administered with any IV fluids, particularly, uh, no. The caution is tetracycline should not be administered with IV fluids, which are containing the salts like linger lactate and calcium preparations. Because here the, it causes a reaction with that of the calcium and going to chelate it and a turbid solution will be formed. And clinical uses, the tetracyclines are used for treatment of the infections with different organisms, uh, the mycoplasma, chlamydia, rickettsia, then anaplasma, then hemobarbito bartonella, erlichia, then borrelia. All these are used. In birds, they are used in the treatment of the cytokosis, is one of the common infections in birds. And various infections treated by the tetracycline include the bronco pneumonia, urinary tract infection, metritis, mastitis, prostitis, then cholangitis, especially in case of mastitis, uh, sometimes the microorganisms uh, will be responding to the treatment of the tetracyclines. Then, the, of course, the actinomycosis and uh, the actinobacillosis also respond to some extent, even though it is not the drug of the choice, it can be administered. And some agents like the chlorotetracyclines are uh, used in food producing animals as growth promoters. And the tetracyclines have high affinity for the bones and get deposited in them. So please remember the all these disadvantages and drug interactions, especially the tetracyclines are uh, concerned. So, so they are going to uh, deposited in uh, the bone, hence not to be used in such animals. They are the broad spectrum antibiotics, of course, but acquired resistance is now wide spectrum among the bacteria. Therefore, they should be only for those infections for which more selective and less toxic antimicrobial is not available. So they should be used with caution, uh, especially 
in varieties of the diseases where there is resistances occur. So the administration, uh, the tetracyclines are administered via the different uh, routes, especially the different routes of the, especially the So only one or two slides because uh, we can finish it. So they may be administered oral, parenteral or topical routes and also some of the intra-memory preparations are available. The choice of the route of administration depends upon the type of the species involved and type of the action desired and the type of the compound, which type of antibiotic. All tetracyclines can be administered by IV, IM route, but IM route is not recommended, uh, especially uh, in case of the small animals. They should never be administered with IM route because it is highly painful and local application of the tetracycline in ophthalmic ointments or the buffered solutions is uh, employed for the conjunctivitis also. Then intermembrane infusion of the tetracycline in the mastitis treatment is extensively used in case of the animals. And uh, tomorrow we will learn about the different tetracyclines, especially the classifications like short, intermediate and long-acting uh, tetracyclines. And we'll see the, what are all the side effects, etc. Okay.